Hi everybody, it's Brad with Big Family Homestead and in this video we are making candy. Sweet, awesome, simple, easy candy. So let's get to it. That's right, we are making candy. Some friends of mine at church said they really like watching uh, these silly videos we make uh, and, and all the different desserts and, and sweet things, but they said also that they like watching animal videos too. So I started thinking to myself, how could we do this? And I came up with the perfect solution, cooking with animals. How about that? We're gonna cook up some candy with animals. How crazy and fun is that gonna be? If you're wondering, has he lost his marbles? The answer is probably yes. But we're gonna still cook some candy up. It's awesome, it's easy. Basically gonna show you the ingredients. We're gonna do it fun, easy, cheap, cheap, cheap. And you should be able to make it And you know, it only takes like 10 minutes. So this is awesome stuff. Okay, so for ingredients, as always, or generally speaking, I should say, if it's a complicated recipe, I generally don't make it. And this one is very, very basic. You really only have four things that are gonna make this candy up. You've got two cups of granulated sugar, two thirds cup of light corn syrup, three quarters cup of water, and then some kind of a flavoring. I'm gonna show you up close what I got here. This is a raspberry flavoring, but it's from, I believe, Loran, Loran Oils, raspberry flavor. And um, you can use whatever you want. Uh, I've even seen people using uh, essential oils and all kinds of other things, but we use those because it's pre-made, pre-measured out, easy to do, and I think it costs like 50 cents or something really, really small, so there you go. Okay, for tools, it's basic stuff. You're basically gonna need a saucepan, uh, a spatula, and um, you're gonna need a cookie sheet or whatever kind of form you wanna pour it into. If you're gonna make lollipops, you could get little forms for them or dinosaurs or even ape-like looking things. That would be crazy candy, candy apes. But yeah, anything, whatever floats your boat. You will also need a thermometer to monitor the temperature of your soon-to-be deliciousness in candy. Yay. Okay, now that we've got our ingredients sorted, we're gonna heat up our saucepan, and I'm gonna need help from my lovely assistant, David, because it would be truly a silly thing for me to be cooking with a rabbit in my hand. So here is my lovely assistant, David. Ha! The hammer, the cannon, DJ Magic Snappy Pants, <laughs> whatever you wanna call them. So he's getting the, uh, the saucepan ready, and we've got our thermometer, because basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna heat these ingredients up, to 300 degrees, they're gonna boil. Then as it's cooling down, you're gonna stir in your lovely raspberryness. For us, it's raspberryness. It's whatever flavoring you want. And uh, that's it. Then you put it on your tray. It'll spread itself out, and as it cools down, you cut it. So here we go. Let's get it going over a medium-high heat. So now as David's putting the ingredients in, I wanna make a note there. If you see that thermometer stick, the sticky thermometer. You basically don't want it touching the bottom or else it'll give you a false reading, but you do want to make sure that it's fully into your mixture here. And in goes the water. And now it's simply a waiting game. Now, as the temperature is coming up to 300 degrees, you do want to make sure that you're stirring it regularly. You're looking for a boil. Make sure that you're checking that temperature. You don't want to get it too hot or you will burn it. Now, you do want to keep stirring, but when, when you reach 260 degrees, then you're going to stop stirring because it's going to continue to elevate in temperature. It's already at, at a mass, a critical mass, critical, critical mass, and it's going to keep getting hotter. So basically at 260, you stop, and then it should start to clear up. Okay, so we have just now crested the 260 degree mark. So we will no longer be stirring, but we will still be waiting. Oh yes, we will be waiting. All right, so now we're keeping an eye on the temperature, like good little scouts that we are. But keep in mind that the last few degrees, the last 10, 15 degrees jump quickly. So you gotta be ready to get this off the heat. Then you're gonna stir it up again as you add your flavoring and then onto your form. We just crested 300 degrees. We've taken our goo off the heat. We're adding our flavoring. We're gonna stir it up and pour it into uh, what we're using for form is just our cookie sheet. So go ahead and take that thermometer off there. Be careful. Keep in mind, this is 300 degree stuff. And if it sticks to you, it will stick for a while. It will burn the stew out of you. Be very careful. So here we go. Now, we're like I said, we're just using a cookie sheet for our form because we're gonna cut it into squares. And just pour it on. 
and it will spread out just like that. Now some of you might be saying to yourself right now, hey, inner chubby guy, why don't you lick the spoon? That'd be a terrible idea. It might tear off your tongue. It's very hot, don't do it. Resist the urge. All right, let's see if this thing has cooled down. It's been about 15 minutes. What you do is you just take a regular little pizza cutter and you're gonna score this. Yeah, like that, into whatever sizes, shapes, pieces you want. Now if it's not, can you see that? If it's not ready, it'll just kind of blob back over itself. And the idea is not, you're not cutting it. We're just trying to get it to a score so that when it actually does get completely hard, then it will break apart very easily. Now if you let this go too long, it will start to break right away. So there's a sweet spot. It's usually about 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, see, look, it started to blob back together. The edges are fine. I gotta wait, so we'll wait another five. Now at this point, it's all gridded up and it's not gonna blob together anymore. And if you were a normal person, you would just let that sit there for a good 40 minutes or whatever, but, well, let's just say I'm abnormal and I'm also not very patient. So, into the freezer you go, baby. All right, so we've very impatiently waited and reluctantly waited and waited. And now it's done, it's ready. So basically you can just take and crack it, bust it out of here however you need to do it. I can sometimes get under here with a knife, which is exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So now you have made candy. Delicious, delicious candy. One more step that we do is we'll actually take some powdered sugar and dust this stuff with it, shake it around. I mean, this, this little container is not big enough. We'll do it in a bigger container. But the reason for that is it helps it not stick together, which is really nice. So there you have it, folks. Cheap, easy, delicious, homemade candy. It literally costs us maybe 50 cents for everything. And, and the great part is you know what you're getting. You know, there's no nasty weirdo chemicals, no asbestos or fungal material. <sighs> well, anyway, I uh, hope you like the video and the animals. So uh, there you have it. I'm Brad with Big Family Homestead. <laughs> Please pass the video around. Yes, we're silly. It's just silly here. Anyway, have an amazing day. That is one lazy dog. One lazy dog indeed.